Hi, everyone. It's uh, John again for another Indie Creative Mastermind. And this time we've got Dawn Fields back with us. And of course, uh, Brandon, who's uh, typically here with our mastermind as well. So it's great to have him back. And uh, this week we're going to talk about film festivals. And really the whole thing with film festivals, I find, was that, um, you know, it's a real mystery about what it takes to kind of, uh, you know, not just to win the awards to kind of get your films shown and stuff like that, but to build the connections, because everyone he talks about, you know, how you can do that and stuff. But I think for most folks, it's a real mystery about what it takes to kind of do that. And I think the other thing that we typically do is, you know, we always want to know the secret. And the thing that I find, you know, with uh, Dawn is that she's definitely somebody who knows, you know, not only like how to do the work, but she gets it done. And so uh, Dawn, maybe you can talk a little bit. Oh, before we jump into that part, I do want to say real quick that, um, you know, Dawn with a uh, fragile storm in particular has been racking up some really, you know, like everything from uh, winners of uh, dramatic shorts of, uh, you know, best actor, best narrative. And then recently at a wild, uh, she, you know, basically did a sweep of like multiple awards there and stuff like that. So um, this week, you know, like like once I, I start seeing some of that, I wanted to kind of get into what she's been doing, what what is it, you know, that it's kind of been behind her success and stuff like that. So Dawn, maybe you can lead in with like just kind of little some of your story about like kind of going from after the film being made um, to getting on the film uh, festival circuit. Well, if we're talking about film festivals in general, I'd like to start by saying that. Several years ago, I produced my first film. I didn't direct it, but I produced a short film called The Interrogation. And that was the winner of one of my script contests that I held on Facebook. I, I will preface this by saying just about every contact I have in the film business right now came from Facebook in some way, shape, or form. And I hear a lot of filmmakers say, oh, I don't really get the social media thing, and I don't really have a lot of followers and all that kind of stuff. If, if you're going to be an independent filmmaker, it's critical. I mean, you have to find your own audience. And if you want to go work for the studios or try to be a director or a producer at the studio level, that may be a different thing. But at this level, at the uh, independent level, it's really critical that you find your own audience. And so all of this really kind of started four or five years ago when I created a separate Facebook account from my friends and family account mm. just to interact with other filmmakers. Not for any particular reason at the time, other than that's just organically who I was. Like I was wildly curious about this new all the new people that I could reach through Facebook and I could see what they were doing with their films and follow them and learn from them and stuff like that. So I, uh, I friended every film related company, liked every film related page and really quickly, probably within a matter of months, I had reached my 5,000 limit. Wow. Um, and then at that time, that was it. They didn't have subscribers. They didn't have followers. They moved from that into subscribers. So you could add to who was following you that way. And now they have, then now they call it followers. Uh, the problem with that is they follow you, you don't follow them. So you don't see their posts, but they see yours. Problem with that now is Facebook has changed its algorithms and not that many people see your posts anymore. And they do that on purpose because they're encouraging people to pay to boost their posts, pay for Facebook advertising. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where they are with that. So they figure if you have 5,000 friends, you're probably, it, you know, building some kind of fan base or following and it's not just your close family and friends. Um, so anyway, so I, I do have over 12,000 followers all in the film business, but I don't, I rarely know how to reach them. I don't always know when they're seeing my posts. And these days you don't even know who on your friends list is seeing your posts. The statistics say it's about the same seven to 10% of people. And you, you guys can probably confirm that yourselves, right? Just, does it seem like it's just always the same people that you, that you're communicating with? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so anyway, um, so the interrogation was the first film that we made. And what was really funny was we hadn't really thought about a festival strategy for it. We just wanted to get the film made. But back then everybody was, this was like four, four years ago, I think everybody was saying that the only way you could get on IMDb is to enter a festival, right? Do you guys remember when that was like the only way you could get your, your short film listed on IMDb is if you entered a festival. So, we went on to, uh, I guess, without a box, I guess it was, and we searched what is the, 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 the festival that's coming up the soonest right. so that we can get our film listed on IMDb. IMDb. That was our only real reason for it. And that festival happened to be Santa Barbara. Hmm. 
And we didn't know much about that festival when we submitted to it. And we kind of put it out of our minds because we're like, oh, hopefully we'll get in that so, so we can be on IMDb. And then lo and behold, we get a message that we've been accepted in the Santa Barbara Film Festival. So we went and researched and we're like, holy cow, this is like a really <laughs> big festival. Um, and they only had 13 shorts that year. Oh. The, reason I'm, the reason I'm telling this story is not because our short was so great that, you know, everybody wanted it. The key was it was the world premiere. Hmm. And I will tell you guys, hands down, without a doubt, if you want to get into a big festival, you have to give them your world premiere. It doesn't hmm. mean you won't get into some festivals down the line, but your film has to be super, super good. Like unique, raw, edgy, controversial, something. There has to be something super unique about it. Um, same thing happened a couple years later with my short film Touch, where uh, we had become fond of, uh, well, let me, I'll continue the story with, with the interrogation. So we had our world premiere there. That was uh, late January. And then Dances with Films was coming up in May. And we're like, oh, that's a local festival and a big one. And we love that one. So we submitted to that one and we got in because it was the LA premiere. So you have to think about what premieres do you still have left to give that festival? Because then a couple years later, we had Touch. We chose Dances with Films for that festival. Touch got accepted there because it was the world premiere. Neither of those films got into hardly any festivals after that. Mm. So, because they weren't, I mean, I'm not, nothing, both of those films are special in their own unique way, but they weren't, you know, I guess, terribly festival friendly, um, terribly unique outside of the box, unlike anything else films. And so we, we really struggled to get those films into other festivals. Do um, you have any questions? That, I'm out, trust me, you got, I think you got to stop me at some point, but. No, no, I, I think um, it's interesting that like, you know, really getting it to the one was, you know, I, I mean, almost easy in a way because of the timing and stuff like that. But then yeah. it was, you know, so much harder for the other ones and stuff. So, um, yeah. so what, what changed this time around though? Like for, you know, Fragile Storm, like what was different about what you did this time versus what you did last time? Yeah, because knowing that we, we wanted to have Fragile Storm have a world premiere at a big festival, but the timing was really terrible. We finished the film in, um, let's see, when did we finally get it edited? We finished shooting in September of 2015, 2014, but I don't think we got it edited until like May or June, something like that. So we had missed all the big festivals for the first half of the year. And so we just, it was a tough decision. We realized we didn't want to wait. We, we could submit to AFI and submit to, excuse me, to AFI, Sundance, and Santa Barbara, but none of those were coming up till November and January. And this was like July. So mm. we, just, we just made the decision to go with a smaller local festival for our world premiere, and we chose the Hollywood Film Festival, uh, mostly because we got to screen at the Hollywood Arclight Theater, which is an amazing yeah. venue. Yeah, you know, definitely. So, That's and, and they absolutely loved our film, and they gave us five screenings. Nice. Which is really unusual. Um, they also screened us opening night with two other shorts. It was called Premier Shorts Night. It was the opening night of the festival, so it was the red carpet, all the media and the press was there, and even Penny Marshall was there and oh, came wow. to our screening and was sitting in the front row watching our films. And they did not only a Q&A with the three female filmmakers afterwards, but they did a nice long Q&A with us even before. So we got to introduce ourselves, talk about the film. So they made a really huge deal out of the film. Um, so that's why we chose to go with them. Uh, since then, we've been getting into a ton of other festivals, mainly because this film has a lot of things going for it that the other films didn't. First and foremost, we have a name actor. We have Lance Henriksen in our film. Um, but also, it's a higher quality film than the other two films. It's a message film. It has a twist, and it's under 10 minutes long. So we... We're, you know, we ticked off like all those boxes, right? <laughs> right. Um, so that's been the big difference. But, you know, still with that one, because it wasn't the world premiere, we did not get into Berlin. We did not get into South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. We did not get into Santa Barbara, even though we're an alumni there. Wow. So again, that just goes to show you how well, important. That's interesting. Yeah. It, so I, you know, because that time by, by that, because the thing is, if you have your world premiere in Los Angeles, you've burned your world premiere 
your U.S. premiere, your West Coast premiere, your California premiere, your Southern California premiere, and your L.A. premiere. So you've burned all your premieres. And sorry, that's my dog. Um, and that's the reason that our our film found, which uh, has gotten into several festivals and won several awards, that film did not get accepted into Dance with Films, even though we were two-time alumni there. Uh, you know, we premiered The Interrogation and Touch. They did not accept Found, which is actually a pretty good film. I don't think it's as has as much going for it as found, uh, Fragile Storm does, but it was still a really good film by its own right. They rejected it, and they told us, why did you burn all your premieres? Why didn't you? I said, because we couldn't wait six months to right, see a right. festival. And she didn't like that answer, but, you know, it was the truth. But they flat out told us, like, you burned all your premieres. And, you know, if, if, they, if they have two kind of equally good films to choose from, they're going to go with the premiere. Got it. So, so, so yeah, just so, so that's a, a unique part about uh, the festival that's, um, you know, like compared to like, if you were showing to some at some theater and stuff, it, it doesn't have that same uh, you know requirement, right, of, of being a premiere in, in 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 different categories and stuff like that. So so I guess what I'm saying is that 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 apparently is a big thing in in film festivals that's unique to it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: it doesn't matter where you screen; you can screen in a bar. It's your world premiere. Oh right. You know, and I mean, you could you could hope to take the chance that the festival circuit in general doesn't find out about it. And I, I've had people I know, you know, uh, premiere at like these really small local festivals and go, oh, well, we're just going to have this little local premiere and then we're going to have our world premiere somewhere else. Like, no, I'm sorry. That was your world premiere. And, and we, we made that mistake also. We had a we had a local festival tell us that if we screen with them and kind of use that as our cast crew screening, it wouldn't count as our world premiere because they said because they wouldn't advertise it that way. However, other festivals, because they do advertise that event, mm. saw they Google these festivals, they Google you and they find out like if you screen somewhere else and if you won awards because, you know, they don't always they can't always trust that, that people are telling them exactly right. what's what, you know. So they'll Google you, and that's kind of what happened. And and um, and we had, because because we were saving our LA premiere for Dance with Films, but they found out about our other screening, and and so that blew it for us. So it's you know Got it's it. real it's real you know once you have your world premiere, you can screen at a little bar, or your uncle's house, whatever you want to do. But mm -hmm. where you have your world premiere in your city and your region and your state premiere is really important. Like for instance. South by Southwest will not accept you uh, at all if you've screened anywhere in Austin oh. prior to prior to their prior to their festival. They're very mm. very specific about that. So right. you that have to sense. do your yeah yeah. So you have to do your research and you have to figure out. And then some festivals they a lot of festivals will say they don't care about the premier status, but it's usually not true. Got it. So, um, can you talk a little bit about what was unique about the Idlewild, uh, you know, festivals itself? Though it sounded like it was an incredible experience, and, and maybe you can talk a little bit about like kind of how um, going to that was, you know, like what what made it special, and then the event itself. Idlewild is incredible for me, and it holds a very special place in my heart because when Found was ready to be released, we were hoping to premiere it at Santa Barbara. Uh, we had targeted specifically to come out at a time where we could premiere it at Santa Barbara. Um, but as we were getting closer to the notification date and we hadn't heard from them, I started to get nervous and like my spidey senses started tingling and my instinct took over and I'm like, you know, I love Santa Barbara and I know they love us, but they show so few shorts and you know that if they don't like found, they're not going to take it even though it's the world premiere and found's a very rough edgy film. It's, told in a unique style it's it's different it's a little bit odd in some ways um and so it's not it's not for every festival for sure and there's a lot of festivals that didn't get into um but at the last minute one of the programmers of idlewild had done i had connected with on facebook had come to the world premiere of touch at dances with films to meet me in person to thank me, whatever. And she told me she rents this little festival called Idlewild. And I'm like, Oh, that's kind of cool. So when we were, we were looking at alternatives to Santa Barbara, I'm like, you know what? Idlewild's coming up. I wonder, hmm. 
if we could call them and say, I know it's a little bit late in the game, but would you program us if we give you the world premiere? And they said, absolutely. So we got everything together, we sent it in, whatever. Didn't think we had a snowball's chance in hell of winning anything, because we got in so late. We just wanted to world premiere somewhere. So we drive up to Idlewild, spend four days there, small, tiny, little intimate festival up in the mountains. <clears throat> Beautiful town, but very small, very intimate. After having my other two screenings <clears throat> at Santa Barbara and Dances with Films, Dances with Films is at the Chinese Theater, Ton you know, 200, 300 people on a real movie screen, whatever, I walked into the world premiere of Found at 10 o'clock on a Friday. That's the other thing. They didn't, give, they didn't give us the greatest schedule either. We got 10 o'clock a.m. on Friday and 10 o'clock a.m. on Saturday. Like, yeah, they don't like us very much. So <clears throat> I walk into the to, the to the screening Friday morning at 10 a.m., and there's like 20 people there, and my film is screening on a television. Yikes. In, a, in, the, in the lobby of a, of a ski lodge. And... I'm, and people are sitting on the ca on couches and you know a couple fold up chairs. I'm like, oh my god. So, but I'm like, you know what? Try not to freak out. Just you know, just be zen about it, whatever. <laughs> so, they asked me to come up and introduce the film, which I did, which was kind of nice. Then the film played. Then they had me come up and do a Q and A before the feature that was coming next. But it wasn't a block of shorts. We were playing for what turned out to be the hottest feature of the festival. So that's another clue. If, if you oh. have a short that gets screened with a, sh with a feature, a documentary or feature, that's all the buzz, you're probably going to be all the buzz as well. I've had that happen multiple times now. It doesn't always happen that way, but it could indicate, you know, good fortune for you. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm doing the Q&A and the audience, hang on, Ella, stop barking. <laughs> the audience is so engaged and they're asking all the right questions and they broke out into applause like three different times during my Q&A, especially when I first said, this is the first time anyone's ever seen this film. This is the world premiere. They went, ah, they went crazy. <laughs> um, so that turned out to be the probably the best screen experience, uh, one of the best screen experiences I've ever had. Hmm. So we screen the next day. The wrong file gets played. It's so dark, oh. you can't even see the image. And I'm like, you know what? We don't have a shot in hell. This is just, this is fun. But, and, and I don't want to have a huge award ceremony. So Saturday night, we go to the award ceremony, and it's all fun, and we're enjoying it, whatever, but we're thinking, no shot in hell. We win best female director and best short. Wow, go figure. Just like totally unexpected, right? Completely shocked. So that was last year. So this year, when Fragile Storm was ready uh, to, to, you know, it had premi already premiered in September, and Idlewild is in January, uh, they invited us again. And then I'm thinking, well, we don't have a shot in hell of winning twice in a row because, you know, they're not going to want to give the same filmmaker awards twice in a row. But lo and behold, we, we went. We had three screenings. We were all the buzz. Everyone was talking about what is the short film to see. We were it. We won best short, best director, best screenplay, and best actor, Lance Henriksen. So we, we swept the short film awards pretty much. Nice. Yeah. That one was a little bit more expected than found, but still <laughs> we were wondering, like, how well we would do considering that, you know, maybe they don't want to seem like they were showing favoritism, you know, or whatever. But what we had going for us was a really strong film. Fragile Storm, I'll just go ahead and say it, is a really strong film. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I mean, it, it definitely, for me, when I first watched it, I felt like it really went above like what you typically expect of, you know, like a first short or, or like a, or, or, just indie shorts in general, you, we tend to have like pretty low expectations, you know, like kind of, but you know, when you have like a film that has the production quality of something, something you just definitely see at, at, at like a yeah. feature film and stuff like that. And, and just the, you know, and of course the actor, as we you know, know and stuff like that, then it's just kind of yeah. like, wow, it's kind of like catches your attention right away. Just those two key aspects and everything. And um, I think it was, would you say that that's part of it then? Like, in other words, I guess, you know, all things aside with like kind of anything you do with promotion, all this stuff, I guess it does still come down to you have to have a quality product. You can't, you know, pr promote something if the quality yeah. isn't there. So all that work yeah. that you put into, you know, Fragile Storm then, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, you know, we love to have the awards and stuff, but I think people tend to focus on getting those, but not on the fact that like you've got to do the work, <laughs> you know, to get yeah. back, to the, which is to our original point, you know, like kind of that's the well, thing that, yeah. And you have to understand that these festivals see thousands and thousands of films, and yours has to stand out some way. 
I mean, the bigger festivals, oddly enough, are looking for more quirky stuff, something that's just weird and different and a, a story told in a completely different way. We were actually told several festivals we didn't get into because it just, we just weren't, you know, we told our story in a, other than there's kind of a twist to it, we told it in a, a pretty straightforward way. And so I would say, you know, if you want to get into like a Sundance or a slam dance or some of these bigger festivals, just go out and make some like weird, wacky thing that, I don't know, it's like weird. I, I, and I go see some of these things and I, I have a hard time with films like that because I came up through, you know, big budget films and just kind of mainstream filmmaking. I'm not going to say I'm necessarily a studio person, but I'm a pretty mainstream filmmaker. I don't, I don't go too weird or outside the box with my films. But right now, it seems to be all the rage, and that's even being evidenced right now at Sundance. Cool. You know, there's that big story about how Daniel Radcliffe's movie, he plays a, a farting corpse, they say, and people were lined up, and they were turning people away, and then once the film started, halfway into it, people started walking out. Like, a lot of people started walking mm. out. Wow. Um, because Sundance this year has turned their attention to, to more low-budget, quirky, kind of outside-the-box films, rather than the films with names you know, right. Sundance had a reputation for a really long time. It's like, oh, they're not even independent anymore. You have to have an A-list actor to get into Sundance. Mm -hmm. They've totally turned that on its head this year, and that's being evidenced by some of the films, and people aren't necessarily liking them. Interesting. Not all, not all of them, anyway. Not that one. <laughs> Welcome, Healing Light. Uh, you have a question, uh, something you wanted to ask? Uh... Uh, no, I just wanted to congratulate Dawn, really, for her okay. success on, uh, on Fragile Storm. Very thank cool. you so much. Thank you. Before we lose too many people, because I know how this works, as time goes by, as people have to go and whatever, can we, I, I would like to offer you guys a link to go see the film right now online. Uh, it's a private link, so you can't share it, and we are doing a private fundraiser. We still have some festival fees that, that we're trying to, to raise. We're, we're still in the fundraising stages because we're getting to so many festivals. We didn't budget for all that, so we still need more money for travel fees. Uh, I was going to type it up on a sign, but uh, if you guys want to, I put, you have it? I put the link for the uh, the support link. Uh, so yeah, for anybody who wants, so would that yeah. allow them to, you know, basically yeah. connect with you? Okay, awesome. Yeah, they they can email me there, and I have the the entire film Great. right there where they can watch it. Yeah, so it's fragilestorm.com forward slash support. So yeah, we just put the link, and then I'll definitely once we upload the video to YouTube, I'll provide the link as well again. So, well, yeah, don't put it on YouTube. Don't put the link oh, on really? YouTube. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, no right. Yeah, because it's private. Um, yeah, because it's then private. I'll, I'll get another link then for yes yeah, for them to contact you directly then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but that's a place where you can go see the film right now and see what you're supporting and, and help us help us get into a few more festivals. Awesome. Um, did you, did you have something you want to say or, or other or ask? Uh, you talking to Healing Light? Yeah, yeah, Healing Light. Uh, my name is Reno, by the way. Oh, Reno, yeah. Are um, you are you Reno Anastasia? Yes, I am. Oh, get out! Yeah. Oh my God! Hi, Hi. it's so nice to finally meet yeah. you. <laughs> well, just so you guys know, Reno has been a supporter of I think just about every film I've made. Yes. Uh, starting all the way back with Zombie Elves, my very first crowdfunding campaign <laughs> that I did back in two thousand nine. Yeah, Reno's awesome. one of our, uh, he cool. always comes on as either an associate producer or an executive producer. Huge support. Thank you. You've, you've helped make this possible, literally. Well, Very cool. You know, I, I didn't wow, know, so nice to meet you. I didn't know you, 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 you couldn't recognize me by my uh, filmmaking name. I didn't. I did not know your filmmaking name. All I know you by is Reno. Okay. Okay. Well, you mentioned the, wow. you mentioned the uh, zombie elves, by the way. I was just wondering, whatever became of that because I, I never uh, saw anything uh, like it, did it ever go to post-production or was it ever filmed? No, what happened was that initial campaign, I didn't know anything about crowdfunding then, so I made like every mistake in the book there is to make. Um, that campaign, we were trying to raise $40,000 of development money against a $600,000 shooting budget um, to do a, a film called zombie else, which is exactly what it sounds like. What if there was an outbreak, a zombie outbreak on the North pole? Um, and so we offered all these perks that we were kind of already making for, for marketing for the film. Anyway, we had a calendar, really expensive, nice calendar that we had done t-shirts we had designed and made up all these things. And we only raised about $4,000 out of the 40,000 we needed. 
So that ended up being just enough money to fulfill the perks. So I did at least give everybody their calendars and their t-shirts, um, but it, it wasn't enough money to get the film made. Um, the good news is, is that the film is still in development. I am still trying to get it made. We had a script written initially back in the day and it missed the mark. It wasn't the right tone and it wasn't really the right, um, I don't want to say genre. There was a, well, but it is. It was. It wasn't the kind of funny, campy, scary, Christmassy thing that you thought it would be. It ended up being something else. It didn't really work. Um, so the challenge that we're still having now is how much of a comedy is it? How scary is it? Is it is it a kind of a dark family film like Gremlins? Is it more like Krampus? You know, super high end budget. It, it, you know, it's like we're we're just still trying to figure out what that movie is. Um, I'm looking at doing my first feature film here pretty soon and I'm trying to decide if I want to jump in and make that my first feature film or if I want to tackle something smaller first because it's a very difficult film to make. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. Do you use little people? Do you use children? Do you use CGI? What do the elves look like? Where do they come from? When they turn into el zombies, what are, what are the creatures, you know, there's creature design that has to happen. It's a whole, it's a whole complicated thing. Uh, but don't give up. I am determined one day to make that movie. It is still it is still in the pipeline. Well, that's good to know. Um, I'm determined to see it. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to when right? it moves forward. That's what everybody yeah. says. It's like yeah. everybody's it's the kind of film everybody wants to see, nobody wants to make, you know, because it's so <laughs> difficult to make. You know, it's it's just we're trying to figure out how do we please all the audiences. You know, because if you if you make it a comedy, then you alienate some. If you make it a straight up horror, you alien. You know, it's it's it, it's tough, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for stopping by, Reno. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow, we have even more people now. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Did somebody else want to jump on? Um, I'm going to uh, see if let's see here. John, uh, I, I would look forward to meeting you maybe next year because I have to go to LA at some point to shoot a scene for my next movie. Oh, that's great. Where do you live? Uh, I'm in Edmonton, Canada right now. Oh, nice. Okay, well, definitely keep me posted and we will definitely meet when you come into town. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Rena. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing some questions in the question box. Yeah, you I see those? too. Um, looks like... Adam's asking, uh, he'd like to talk about uh, what you feel could make a submission stand out among a sea of other films. That's a great question. Well, okay, let me think for a second. Um, telling, the, telling them it's the world premiere, first of all. Uh, mentioning if you have any name cast. Mentioning any awards or accolades that you've previously won. Um, other than that, I mean, if, if, if it's a festival that's in your hometown and you're trying to get them to have the world premiere like in your hometown, you could say, it's the world premiere, it's my hometown, I know all my family and friends will come out and see it. Uh, you know, we haven't had a cast and crew screening yet, so the cast and crew would come out, you know, you could try things like that. So, but you know, honestly, that, they, they watch all the films. You know, it's not like, oh, how do I make sure they watch my film? Hmm. They're going to watch your film. That's what they get paid to do. They have to. There's horror stories that they say, oh, they don't actually watch your film or whatever. Um, but I, I believe I believe that they do. And so the big thing is you you got to have a good film. I would say make sure that if you're talking about shorts, make sure that your film is absolutely the shortest you can make it. And for God's sake, don't make it more than 20 minutes long. <laughs> You know, it's a kiss of death. It, it makes it very hard for the programmers to program. Yeah. We've been lucky with Fragile Storm in being placed in front of feature films because we're 10 minutes. Um, you know, they, they need flexibility with the programming. Would you say uh, the high, like, uh, like you said, 10 minutes is, 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 a great, is a great time and 20 is too long. Where, do you, where would you say is the most like advantage you know, a timeline for film to have. Like, you know, I see, you see some films are like five minute films and some that are 15 minute films, there, there's a, a wide spectrum. You know what I mean? Yeah. They say between seven and 12. Seven and 12, okay. 
Definitely under fifteen. Definitely okay. I say between I say between ten and fifteen personally. Yeah. Um, the, the, the guys at South by Southwest, I, I heard a podcast or something with them. They were saying, well, actually, I don't think they said it's their preference. I said the, I think they said the average was seven to 12 or maybe the, the average that gets programmed, Yeah. not the average short, but the average that gets programmed was seven to 12. But I think if, if you can stay under 15 minutes, um, it, it's an advantage because what's happening now is a lot of festivals, including Idlewild have separate categories for shorts that are hmm. over 15 minutes. Yeah. Like Idlewild calls them a featurette. Yeah. So they're shorts, featurettes, and then features. And that worked out to our advantage this year because we did not have to compete with some films. I would, I'm glad we didn't have to compete with. <laughs> there were some films in that featurette category that I'm, I'm glad our short didn't have to compete with. Um, I have one um, last question. I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, so I'm mm -hmm. submitting, I'm submitting film. It's about 12 minutes long. And you know, I've heard from various people, online screeners versus mailing DVDs versus mailing Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. What have you guys found to be the most successful way to send your film in? You know, because it could kind of be used as a way to kind of stand out versus like just a whole bunch of online screeners. I know that's how most people do it. Uh, what do you think on, on that specific topic? Well, um, these days, most people prefer an online screener or a Vimeo link. It's certainly a lot easier on you. Yeah. Um, if you want to stand out, you could do that. It's going to cost you a lot more because you should send at least three every time because you got to remember there's not just one person viewing this. It's usually a jury or a team of people. Yeah. So if you're going to do it, I would send three and then you got to find out, do they want Blu-ray or do they want DVD? And then you got to worry about your, your DVD or Blu-ray not playing. If you're going to do it, make sure you get professionally burned this. I, I had an, I was at a party for a, an opening night for a production company last week and they decided they wanted to screen my film. They wanted to show it to the 150 people who were there mm. anxiously and eagerly wanting to see my film. I brought three DVDs and none of them would play. Oh, And we're still trying to fundraise. We're still trying to raise money for the film. And there, there was a room full of people with money who cared about my film. Yeah. Oh my God. And we, and we, and we couldn't play it. So oh, wow. I, you know, so just a little side note, one, you should always have a professional DVD or at least one you know that plays. It doesn't have to be like fancy jacket and all that kind of stuff, yeah, but one that's burned on, well, that tested on what system, you know, go to a professional house okay. and just have them do one that's going to, you know, even if you have to do five or 10 or 12, um, always have those on you, on your person and always have a little thumb drive or a flash drive with mm. your actual QuickTime file on it, preferably an MPEG-4. Okay. Uh, that's just a kind of a side note or when, you know, once your film is, is done and you're, you're out and about it. And I've even had some people say that they've been at festivals who, you, you know, who are screening on Blu-rays and sometimes computers and the, the show that the film that they were trying to screen wouldn't play, wouldn't work or whatever. So they literally asked if anyone in the audience had a film they wanted to screen. <laughs> oh, wow. And a girlfriend of mine said she screened her film because she had it in her purse and they had it. <laughs> Yeah, so always have it on your person, wow. as, as well as postcards. You should always have postcards. Postcards. And business cards, yeah. Okay, cool. I think that's it for me. I'm not really sure how to stop Okay, this. yep. No, no worries. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, yeah. So I does mean, this only – oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome, though. Like, just, you know, like, just the simple kind of – mechanical part you know like when we're having a physical copy still matters you know like because we're all nowadays we're all about having yeah. you know like our you know things on the line and you know like having you know yeah you know, things on phones well, like I, well i'll give you another tip too when you're doing your vimeo link for the festivals create a vimeo link that's just for the festivals hmm. one that you don't send anywhere else so that you can kind of track and, and Got then it. you'll know who's seeing it who's sharing it like I had a festival one time, the first festival I sent to, I sent it to them and they, they, uh, they passed on it and I went and looked and my, my link had zero views. So I guess sometimes with it, this was a small festival. Some of the big, most of the big ones, they will watch your films, but I, I guess there is something to be said for sometimes they don't. Um, but when you're doing that, um, make sure to turn on the button that says watch later. Mm. Uh, because festival programmers say that 
once they get it programmed and loaded into their system with the password, they might, they might need to watch it later or have other people down the line need to watch it and they don't want to have to go back in and find your password again. Uh-huh. So if you, if you put the watch later on it, that lets them just enter the password once and then watch it you know, anytime after that without having to log back in. That's a cool tip. Yeah, Festival Say, please do that. We love that. So the other yeah. thing I, I think with all this too is um, just simply, you know, when you have, you know, these different people that like, uh, you know, you, you've gotten to know and stuff. So like, can you talk a little bit about like kind of the relationship part about it? Like how that, you know, like, because we talked about how, you know, like you've been meeting these people through Facebook and stuff. So I think people get yeah. like tend to go, oh, what's the secret? What's the kind of, you know, so, so. You know, I, and I, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I, I, don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth about like what, what, it takes to, what it takes to kind of basically build these relationships that lead to, you know, success in these festivals and, and just, you know, in the industry in general and stuff. Well, I think you just, you got to go to events, you know, if, if you, especially here, if you're in LA and you're about to enter the festival circuit, spend the year before going to all those festivals. Like just buy a day pass or opening night or closing night or go to their award ceremony if you can get in. It's like, go to these festivals. We found got submitted into a festival that we thought was a pretty big festival. It had a nice screening time at like three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon in Santa Monica. And we went there and there was no one there. Wow. Literally no one in the audience. And that's when we first realized that you can't always rely on these festivals to fill the seats for you. Now, you know that if you have a feature, you pretty much have to do some mark because you're the only one trying to fill up the theater, right? A lot of people think that just because they're playing in a shorts program, it's automatically going to, they're automatically going to have some kind of audience because all the other filmmakers are going to be there with their friends and, and so on, right? That's not always the case. And, you know, our mission is to have as many people see the film as possible. That's our mission. It's not so much to win awards, although that's very nice, but we just want the most number of people to enjoy and experience our film. So what we've learned is, is we now do additional marketing and advertising on top of what the festivals do to make sure that we get people there. Um, Like for example, when we went to Idlewild, we got there a few days early and we went to every screening, everything, we put out our postcards and we would go up to people just standing in the lobby buying a soda, walk up, say, hey, have you heard, you know, and, and you think that it's like awkward to do that and you're like bugging people or whatever. No, 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 that's what they're there for. You walk up and you go, hey, have you heard about my film? And they'll literally, their eyes will light up and they'll literally go, no, doesn't matter what your film is. <laughs> they're like, no, I'd love to hear about your film. And you hand them that postcard and you, you hook them with the artwork and all that. And then on the back of the, art, the, the postcard, you have your screening times at that festival or any festivals coming up after. And even if you're in between festivals, make up your postcards and put the times of your upcoming festival, Mm -hmm. even if it's a month away, like whatever's coming up next, always have it on the back of that card, which means, you know, what I do is uh, I keep the back of my postcards blank. And then we just print out on our, on our, you know, little mailing labels, the little five five by four, whatever mailing labels. And so you end up like sticking them over and over and over on, on some of them um, covering up new ones, but always keep that information fresh as to when your, your next thing is. So, the best thing that can happen to you is you get two screenings at a festival, one early on and one later on more towards the awards. At that first one, try to get as many people to come as you can. But after that, you hope that there's some buzz and they start talking. And then you spend the rest of the week handing out your cards and saying, here's your last chance to come see us, especially if you've been nominated. The greatest thing Idlewild did this year is they announced all the nominated Mm. films about a week or two before the festival. Right. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Because we all got to go put those laurels because because Fragile Storm got nominated for 13 awards. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. For any festival. Yeah, right. Definitely. And we milked the crap out of that. It's like, you know, and, and we put it on our our um, our postcards and we were handing them out going, come see us. We got nominated for 13 awards. Come see us. You know, your last chance to see us. And, you know, yeah. I wish more festivals yeah. would do that. I mean, there's, there's nothing like the value of, you know, like that's essentially social proof. It's like the festival saying, you know, this is a film, you know, we're seeing and stuff. And then, you know, that's gold. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then, and then so I, I was going to say, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say though, but that was also smart though, that you, you know, also, you know, really played off of that. You basically, you know, let people know, you know, like kind of, you know, both on your <laughs> media and also in person. I mean, you know, 
yeah that combined you know is, is i think that's what people miss is that like we we tend to think you know like about you know going to using facebook or kind of uh, you know twitter stuff like that but we forget that like there's this opportunity of like in the person let them know like kind of you know why they should care i mean that that's really what it yeah. is and 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 you know that if a film got 13 nominations there's something worthwhile about that film right absolutely i'm gonna draw i'm gonna draw, draw something here um i noticed that we have some new people on here oh the other thing i wanted to say is if you guys go to fragilestorm.com uh, you'll, there's a link there, there's our trailers there, and there's also um, a link that says festivals, and that'll list all of our um, festival wins, nominations, where we're coming up next, where we're screening next, and where we've screened in the past. Awesome. But I'm also just going to put this up for fun, just for those joining us. Is it going to be backwards? <laughs> no, it's actually the way it should look, so yeah. I should have typed this up. Anyway, like I said, we're still trying to raise money for our film festival. So if you go to fragilestorm.com forward slash support, that's a private hidden link that's just for you guys. You won't be able to get to it through the navigation bar. You can actually watch the film. We've loaded the full length feature film or full length film uh, there for you to watch. And then, if you know, we still have some producer credits available. We have a memorial wall at the end of the film. Lots of great stuff. So check that out because we're almost out of all those perks we're kind of at the end where a lot of that stuff's going quick so awesome just in case anybody wants to to help support well don i know you, you, you're heading to a, a live event a little bit and stuff like that so any last questions for dawn before she heads out and stuff um yeah i have till seven. Oh, okay great oh and, and by the way if any of you are local here in la fragile storm is screening tonight at the karma lounge uh that's 3954 beverly boulevard it should be screening a little after eight o'clock. We're gonna leave here at seven to, to head down there, but it's a great networking event with a lot of other filmmakers and they're screening several other shorts as well, as well as the interrogation, my first film. They're screening that tonight too. Nice. Yeah, if you, if you guys are not doing anything, so. So yeah, I think that's the, the thing also with, you know, like we were talking about this, the idea that um, with, with these, different events it's, it's about going to them and, and meeting people yeah. i think i think the people we tend to like kind of think of uh you know networking as smoozing that kind of thing stuff but i know you know the way you network don is you just basically you introduce yourself you're very much yourself and stuff there's there's no air there's no uh you know like kind of you know putting on you know like a, a front or like that pretension and stuff yeah like that. um can you talk a little bit about like kind of um uh, what you know what what it is that kind of you know like really can help a filmmaker, you know, like kind of to just basically meet people like kind of on, on a genuine level. Like what, what is it that like, you know, allows them to build a connection versus like just trying to, you know, trying to figure out what their, you know, like kind of their thing is and stuff like that in, in film. You mean other, other than Facebook? Um, yeah, just basically, you know, like the, uh, the difference that's my big thing. Um, I mean, you know, again, I think go to festivals, introduce yourself to filmmakers, go to panels and seminars. There's, there's workshops and seminars and panels and screenings in LA all the time. Just go to them, you know, and just, and just meet people. Go to, go to parties. I mean, I, I think like for me, I don't go out that much really unless it's a festival or something like that. So that's why most of my social networking ends up being Facebook, but I'm very active there. I'm always commenting other people's posts. I'm liking their, and don't just like people's posts. You got to comment, you got to engage. I'm always private messaging people and starting conversations. So and that's just kind of who I am organically. It's just what I enjoy doing. Um, other than that, you know, join join Facebook groups. There's especially women. There's several women-based Facebook groups like uh, <laughs> Women in Media, the Los Angeles Film Collective. Um, I know there's several others. There's a couple of private ones that you'd kind of have to get in on by knowing somebody. Um, if any of you women are out there wanting to know about those private groups, you can send me an email and get in touch with me. Um, you just got to get out there. Brandon, I'm just kind of curious. So also, if you had any thoughts about like other ways that uh, indie filmmakers can, you know, basically, you know, beyond simply what people typically do, which is post links to their uh, films or post links to their <coughs> crowdraising um, sites and stuff like that. I, I just kind of, I'm curious, like what you know, your perspective in terms of, you know, how, you know, from the things you do and stuff like that and the people you've worked with, like what, what's some, suggestions you might offer of indie filmmakers yeah it's like to 
Was someone else asking a question? Well, I, I was just, uh, what's called, uh, asking Brandon about uh, some of his thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so I was in Hollywood for like 10 years um, and like I got signed to ICM and sold TV shows, all that kind of good stuff. And the way I did it was, like she said, I would just go to networking events. And <clears throat> one of the biggest things that I learned was I never went after like the producer or like the executive producer. I, I would go after the people who were like their assistants or like the people beneath them. And that's how I got my agent actually. Everybody's like, oh, you, you know, you're not gonna get signed unless you, uh, you have credits, this, this, that, and the third. And that's not true because I did it. Um, but basically mm. what I did was I went to, I met somebody and um, they knew somebody else who was like a pretty big celebrity. And essentially they walked us into William Morris. And then when William <laughs> signed us, we ended up going to ICM. So basically what, what my point is, is that find somebody who is maybe not the head person, somebody that you can actually make a relationship with and then from there if like she said you have a good film if you have something that's worth value they'll be willing to put their themselves out there for you because everybody in hollywood is always trying to level up so if yeah if if you can bring something to the table that like the big guys are even the people in the in the in the in the uh, in the um short film circuit um, or independent film circuit are not looking for, um, then that's an opportunity. Um, one of my mentors is on the board for uh, the Sundance Film Festival. Um, his wife wrote like Miss Doubtfire, like all these like crazy movies or whatever. And that's the thing. The way I met them was through somebody else. I went to a party and that's how we connect. So it's, yeah, it's just about building relationships and like I said, don't go after the big person because a lot of times they're not going to have time to really talk to you and this and that. But there's somebody usually right. they trust right under them, which is how I got my agent. I went to the assistant. The assistant basically, you know, saw what I had. He wanted, you know, he liked it, brought it to the agent. And that's kind of that's kind of how we did it. Yeah, I, I think that what people yeah. typically do is that they would only talk to the assistant if, like, you know, they can say, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm working on a script. And, you know, like, they, they right away get into what it is that they want and stuff like that. So what was it? Do you, do you kind of remember what you talked about with the assistant? Like, what was it that kind of got the conversation going? Absolutely. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, see, I understood <laughs> that the assistant is trying to level up. Like, he's just at the desk. So he's trying to figure out any way he can to get to the next level. So basically, I just pleaded with him. I'm like, look, I and just like she said, I have like you have to have a good product. You can't just don't go to a networking event talking about what you're going to do or like what's going to happen next year. Like you got to put the work in first and have the faith. Like, look, right. I'm going to do the work first and then I'm going to take it out there and then I'm going to go out there and do it. So I had already had all the pieces put together. I have the show, I have the talent, I had everything. So literally I went to him and I'm like, look, I have this, I will give it to you. You walk it in and then you'll get credit for it and hopefully get a promotion and I'll get credit and everybody wins. So it's really about creating a value proposition. I mean, that's what yeah. business and life is about. It's like, if, if I can help you, then you'll help me and everybody wins. But I think too many people in Hollywood they just don't want to do the work first. They want to like just get somebody to do the work for them or give them the money or do this and do that. But it's really the complete opposite. It's like you got to put the groundwork in and basically then from there, you have something to trade for somebody to introduce you to somebody else. So that's my, Absolutely. That's my two cents. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's like we when we hear these success stories, we feel it, it almost seems like that like it's glossed over, you know, like we, you know, like it just even like the best films, right? Like Rocky, it just seems like in the few minutes montage and stuff, we, we have a nice tight image of what it took for him to get ready for that big fight and stuff. But in reality, that was like weeks and months of like kind of grueling, you know, workout and stuff. I mean, you know, that's the thing that like we, you know, granted, you know, again, that's the Hollywood version because, you know, it's hard to, you know, 
to put into two hours all what happened. So we basically put in these nice, neat slices and, you know, nicely framed and all that. And, and the thing that we have to remember is that's the Hollywood version. The reality is all the other, you know, stuff that's done to get to that point. And, and even though it's not as neat and stuff like that, that's, that's really it. I mean, I'll admit, you know, this is even for like tonight's mastermind stuff. This is like the biggest showing we've had, but you, you and I, Brandon, how many masterminds have we been on? And like, we're like, you know, we have like maybe two or three people, people show up and everything. And that's a thing that nobody wants to do that work because it's not as attractive as when, you know, hundreds of people jump on your blab and, and to talk and stuff like that. But the thing is, though, if you commit to it, you believe in it and stuff, you know, Dawn's a great, you know, kind of she her story is basically to me also knowing her and, and remembering when she was like first trying to get a story out, first getting together her first production or anything like that. I remember all those kind of times and, and she put in a lot of work and that's the thing that people won't yeah. see, you know, that that's why ultimately she's had this success now at, you know, this, these festivals and everything. So yeah, 20 years, 20 years later, I'm going to be an overnight <laughs> success. That's right. That's right. That's, that's a great way to put it actually. Does anybody have any questions? I have about five, yeah, six please, more minutes. Please. Uh, anybody else um, just you know, enter, enter something into the chat box or if you'd like to jump on, um, we invite you as well. I'll just go ahead and, Add that as well. Oh, okay, awesome, Nick. Uh, welcome, welcome Nick. Nick. What up? I'm new to blabs. I don't even know what this is about. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I literally just opened a page. And... Uh oh. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> that's 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 not me kicking off, Nick. Uh, you have to have a good internet connection. Okay. Okay. Let's try again. Take two. Hello. Sorry, I moved the tab from one window to the other window, so now I'm back. So okay. yeah. I, I just, I just, uh, this thing came up on my blab the homepage. I just said it says like call in or. Yeah, so it's just Ooh, okay. apparently one. You know, what, as I was just saying that, like, uh, you know, like this is like one of the biggest blabs we've been on and stuff like that, and it just got been getting a lot of attention. And blab will do that. So, you know, once once you get on that kind of, you know, sort of sort of the their equivalent of the new and new noteworthy and stuff, you'll you'll get on the front page. And so apparently, you know, just uh, Brandon, uh, you know, like you 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 and I've been on here. For however many labs, and so this is the first one that we've had, you know, that kind of attention and stuff. So welcome. But well, uh, and I also and oh, I also sorry. promoted the crap out of it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, um, I hope that helps. Uh, you know, tonight we were just talking about film festivals and really what it takes to kind of, you know, get successful. And really, what you know, one of the big take takeaways What's from tonight for me personally is that. Um, just like some Sundance this week is right now, uh, you know, happening and stuff, but different, you know, like everyone has heard of cans and stuff. So it's, uh, the circuit that you can basically get your work shown as a filmmaker and, uh, ideally make that big deal. Well, I actually had a really good idea for a, a funny comedy video. If you want to hear it, <laughs> basically, <clears throat> all right, it's kind of like a parody thing. So imagine two people smoking pot. Okay. And then like, um, they're just like they're like smoking or whatever, getting high, and then um, uh, one of them's taking a psychology class, and the other one's like right there, and he's like he's like, so the guy just talks. One of them says, um, um, you know this, hey, this weed is not doing it for me no more, and I'm not really getting that 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 fucked up no more, or something like that. So the other guy, he's like, uh, well, you know, I heard him, you know, he's like, you know, um, you know, weed is dopamine hitting your receptors and stuff. He's like, yeah, bro, I heard that, so I feel like my I was like a little bit more tolerant. So he's like, yeah, you know, I heard in psychology class, I heard the. There's thing called schizophrenia, and what it is, is basically a bunch of dopamine going in you. It's a permanent high, and the other guy's like, "Damn, bro, I need, I need that shit. I'm trying to get fucked up." So then they try like learning. They try thinking about how they, the other guy's like, "How do I get schizophrenia?" So then they go on this shit, like talking about how they can get schizophrenia and shit, and it's just stupid as fuck, but it'd be hella funny. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> hey, um. John, I'm sorry, so sorry to interrupt. I do have to sure. go here pretty soon. Um, a friend of mine is on here, John Tag, and he wants to know if uh, we can talk a little bit about how to approach name actors yeah, for your sure. film. Uh, is it okay if I cover that real fast yeah, before sure, I leave? Uh, thanks okay, for coming by, Nick. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody had just no, 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 I never. I'm not going. Not going to go there. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so John, okay, so how do you approach name actors for your film? Well, I can't, feature, approaching them for feature films is a whole different thing, and, and Brandon, it sounds like you probably have more experience than I do in, in the feature film world as far as that goes, but I can tell you for a short film, the thing that you have going for you is the agents and managers will read the script, and they will usually read it right away. It's 10 pages, 15 pages, they'll read it right away, so you have that advantage. 
Um, we actually at, uh, at one point sent uh, Fragile Storm to Rutger Hauer, and mm -hmm. I called his manager. And that, and here's the other thing: just pick up the phone and call him. Invest in IMDb Pro. Look up who their manager is. Don't call their agent because agents want money. Call their manager because the managers are always looking for opportunities and things that they can. And sometimes you even call their their uh, publicist, depending on the type of project that it is. But call their manager. Uh, you know. Like you said, start with their assistant. Be very nice to their assistant and make the, the assistant feel important and ask permission for everything. Hey, do you think I could send your, you know, your boss a, a, an email? Is that okay? And deal with the assistant first. Um, but in our situation, we got the manager on the phone right away, sent her the script. She read it right away, and we had a response from Rutger in half an hour. Wow. It was a no, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, he was in Amsterdam. He's like, I'm just, he loved the script. He's like, I'm not going to come over for a short film from Amsterdam, um, which is understandable. But the point is, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, call them, um, have a good project. That's the other thing. And act like you know what you're doing when you get on the phone with them. Be confident, use the right lingo. And that's a whole other thing. Like, well, how do you learn the lingo? You know? Um, but definitely just be confident and just, pro it's sales, like Brandon was saying, it's like any company, it's like sales. Put your sales hat on and be confident, be intelligent, be professional, and be brief. Don't waste their time. Don't start telling them for 10 minutes what the story's about. Mm -hmm. Just go, hey, I have a movie about this. I think your client would be interested. Can I send you the script? Keep it short, keep it sweet. Don't waste their time. Um, and then following up on that's a whole nother thing. You have to, um, you know, not bug them to death. Give, you have to be realistic about that. But there is an advantage with short films where you you can you can just do that. Um, I'm trying to think the way we got to Lance Henriksen specifically is we went on IMDb. We saw that Jane Henriksen, who was also his ex-wife, was his manager. So we went to her website, read a little bit of information about her, and we could tell that she is drawn to really emotional, uh, very dramatic, impactful material. And so we're like, ding, 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 right? And sure enough, we sent her the script and she's like, oh my God, I have to, you know, I have to have him read this. It was a little yes. bit more complicated than that. But, but I will tell you that the film wouldn't have happened without her because he didn't want to read it at first because he, cause we told him at first we didn't have any money. And he's like, I don't want to read it because I don't want to fall in love. Because he, he could tell by her voice that she loved it. And he said, I don't want to read it because I know I'm going to fall in love with it and I'm going to want to do it and they don't have any money. You know, because some actors get to a point where some will do things like this for free. You see them do it all the time. But some actors, they get asked that so much. You know, it's like, you know, I just can't do every short film script I love for free. And we just happened to catch Lance at a time where he wasn't willing at that time to, you know, lower his rate or negotiate his rate or whatever. So we had to pull some strings and we, the bottom line is we got Lance, one because he liked the script, his manager liked the script, but to, to lock him in, we had to give him a pay or play and we had to pay him. I mean, that's, that's the business. I actually have a little bit of insight on that too. About mm, seven years ago, we did an independent film and um, I think I was like uh, an associate producer or something on it, um, but it was like a $750,000 budget. Um, with some guys from Switzerland that I did it with and I was in charge of bringing the talent to it So what I used to do was um, Like I got I got a couple of name actors on the actual film, but essentially what I would do is Especially now we didn't have social media back then Find out like every like uh, like a lot of these actors will post like their passions and so what I did was I would just approach them based on what they were passionate about. And then I would try to find a script or something like that, that was something that they're like an activist for or something that was like beyond money. And then essentially what I started doing was, yeah. and this, this might sound kind of funny, but essentially how I got these people attached was I would send it to like, um, I had this guy named Marshall Allman. He was on prison break. Um, I got it to him because he went to my church or whatever, made a relationship with him. And then I started calling agencies like, yeah, so Marshall Allman has the script and we were thinking that he would be good with so-and-so. And then, they, and then right. they're like, okay, yeah, send me the script. And then I call another agent and I'd say, hey, Marshall Allman's agent has a script. This person has a script. And then I would just, I would make it into a process. And then 
you know, a lot of times they'll at least yeah. help you out and stuff like that. Absolutely. And do your homework. Exactly. Because a lot of these actors, they want to do, they will do your script for little to no money because it's something they haven't done before. Yeah. Something that scares them or something that's outside their box. If you try to send somebody a script that the, the character they've played a thousand times, you got to pay them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not just, they're not going to reduce their rate or do it for free for sure. Um, but there, there are a lot of actors who will do short films if yeah. they like the script. Yeah. We just, and, and Lance if, at any other time probably would have, but you know, they were just at a time where they were, you know, trying to, to finally get him positioned a certain way in the market and, you know, doing short films for free was not the message they were trying to send about him at the time. And, and I, and I respect that totally. And, and I will tell you, we paid a, you know, pretty penny for him, but he was worth every cent, every cent. Yeah. I, I, I think the thing about, you know, as as we've even talked about tonight, is that there's so many ideas out there for short films and stuff. Money is, you know, and and your budget is comes down to that. That's like a way to filter out, like kind of what's the ideas that's worth doing with, you know, like the different yeah. things you have available to you and what's not. I mean, because if we had the money to do all these yeah. different ideas, we do them right. But the thing is, is like that's that's the ultimate filtering system. Is just kind of like okay, we've only got so much time. We've only got these things available and stuff to us for this budget. What can we do and, 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 and go forth and do it and stuff? And speaking of which, um, you know, so Dawn, as you mentioned, yeah. you had uh, the event and stuff like that. Uh, do you want to mention it one more time about what you, uh, what you have tonight's going Tonight's event? And, yeah, tonight's event. And, uh, you know, also yeah, we'll I mean, put the link up event, one more time. It actually started at 7. The screening's not till 8, so it's not too late. If any, if any of you can, like, jump in your cars and go to um, uh, the Karma Lounge on Beverly Boulevard, <laughs> it's 3954 Beverly Boulevard. Uh, my my friend, ha, my film, Fragile Storm, is screening there tonight, as well as uh, the very first short film that I ever did. I didn't direct it, but I produced it, uh, called The Interrogation. They're screening both of those with three or four other shorts. It's kind of a night of, it's a bar situation. It's not, you know, it's kind of just fun and, you know, and so it's that kind of environment. But come on down. It's free, and you get to see my film for free. But you can also see my film for free at this link I'm going to give you again. One more time. Yep, and we've got okay, on the side notes, and uh, we'll definitely you know, make sure we have a contact for you. Yeah, so for those, if anyone's over. just joining, um, we are still fundraising for our film. We're in our final leg of fundraising to raise the money that we need to finish out our film festival circuit and then release the film for free online. Our ultimate goal uh, this summer, hopefully, is to you know, get all of the financial part of it taken care of and you know, do the rest of the festivals that, that we've submitted to. Because what we've always wanted from the start with this film is to just get it out to millions and millions of people if we can and have it raise awareness. That That's always been the goal of it. Um, and thanks, Don. Yes. Well, thanks, Don. Really appreciate, really appreciate you coming back and offering your insights. And it was really great to hear about, you know, your experiences with Ida Wild. And Brandon, as always, thanks for your inputs and your insights into the industry as well. And uh, everybody for joining us. So, you know, we'll be back again next week for another in the uh, creative mastermind awesome. so uh have a great week let's and, do uh, let's we'll do this again, again john because i right, have a then. feeling we could do like a two-hour thing and and still get plenty of questions and lots of answers and stuff so let's, let's do it again sometime awesome. it was nice to meet you brandon awesome. i sent you a friend request on facebook sounds good nice to meet you too <laughs> all right bye bye, -bye. <laughs> okay